Welcome again to our other mathematics lesson. We are continuing with our topic algebraic expressions, equations and inequalities. In our previous lessons we covered uh, much about the algebraic expressions where we said that algebraic expressions are mathematical uh, statements which are normally expressed by use of pronum uh, pronumerals which we said are alphabetical letters such as A, B, X, Z and so forth. Again in our last lesson we are also able to look at linear equations with brackets but um, the pronumerals were on only one side of that particular equation. For the equations we said we do introduce what we call the equal signs and then we have pronumerals on the left hand side of that particular equ equation and on the right hand side we have a figure or a number. A good example of an, um, an equation which has pronumerals on one side is 2x plus 4 is equals to 3. So with this you can be able to see that we have pronumerals on one side of the equal sign. But in this particular lesson we want to consider equations that has pronumerals on both sides of that particular um, equation. A good example is 3 into 2x minus 1 is equals to 2 into 2x subtract 1. So you see this is an equation. Equation because it has an equal sign and it has two sides that is the left hand side and the right hand side. And again we have brackets on both sides of the equal sign and we have pronumerals on both sides of this particular question. So for us to be able to solve this question we need to expand the brackets on both sides then we collect the like terms before we are able to solve. So in this case when you expand this side we'll have 3 multiplied by 2x which will give us 6x. Subtract because the sign there is uh, minus 3 multiplied by 1 is minus 3 is equals to 2 multiplied by 2x will give us 4x subtract 2 multiplied by 1 will give us 2 so that is the first step in solving uh, such problem we have said we expand the brackets or we open up the brackets number two we want to collect the like terms and when we are looking at what like terms are, we said that like terms are terms which consist of pronumerals which have got the same uh, power or fac uh, the same factors. So in this particular case, we can be able to say that 6x and 4x are like terms because their pronumerals consist of uh, factors of 1. So we can be able to bring this 4x to this left hand side and whenever a figure crosses the equal sign, it changes the sign. So for instance here 4x is positive. When it crosses the equal signs to this left hand side, it will become a negative. So we shall have 6x. When this one crosses the equal sign, it becomes minus 4x is equals to. We also want to take this negative 3 to the other side. And on the other side we have negative 2. Again, when this one crosses the equal signs to the right hand side, it will again change the sign to become positive. So we shall have positive 3. When we evaluate what we have on the left hand side, 6x subtract 4x because their like terms will give us 2x is equals to minus 2 plus 3. That means you have a deficit of 2 and you have a positive of 3. So when you add 3 to negative 2, you will get 
positive 1. Therefore, for us to be able to get the value of x, we'll divide both sides by 2. There one, there one. This one will give us that the value of x is a half. So we have said the second step, you collect like terms, then you evaluate, find, uh, you solve, and number five, you can check. In checking, you verify whether it is true that when you replace the value of x with a half, you are going to get um, the exact values on the right hand side and also on the left hand side. Solve each of the following. Equations M two into three X subtract four is equals to eleven. This is a um, is a kind of an equation that has pronumerals on only one side of the equation. And we can be able to solve this by first expanding the brackets or opening up the brackets. When you open these brackets, it will give us 2 multiplied by 3x, that is 6x. Subtract 2 multiplied by negative 4, that will give us negative 8, is equals to 11. The second step, as we said, is to collect the like terms together. And the like terms here are 8 and 11, so that means we take this negative 8 to the other side. And we have said that whenever a figure crosses the equal sign, it changes its sign. Therefore, negative 8, when it crosses the equal sign, it will become positive 8. So this will leave us with 6x on the left-hand side is equals to 11. When negative 8 crosses the equal sign, it becomes positive 8. So this will give us 6x is equals to 11 plus 8 is 19. And therefore, we can be able to get the value of x by dividing both sides by 6. When you divide both, uh, both sides by 6, you'll get 19 over 6, which is equivalent to 3 and 1 over 6 when simplified. So the value of x for this particular equation is x is equals to 3 and a sixth. Part B. into x plus 3 minus 4x is equals to 8. In solving this particular equation again, we need to expand uh, the brackets on the left hand side of this equation. And when we expand, that means you multiply whatever is outside the bracket with everything inside the bracket. This will give us 2 multiplied by 2 is 2x. 2 multiplied by positive 3 is positive 6. Then we continue on the terms outside the bracket. Minus 4x is equals to 8. The second important step is on collection of like terms. And like terms, we said, are pronumerals consisting of the same factors. In this case, 2x and negative 4x are like terms. 6 and 8 are like terms. Therefore, we take 6 to the other side of the equal sign and we remain with 2x minus 4x on the left hand side. This will be equal to 8. Again, when positive 6 crosses the equal sign to the other side, becomes negative. So we subtract 6. Um, 4x from 2x will leave us with negative 2x is equals to when you subtract 6 from 8, you'll get 2. And therefore, if you want to get the value of x, you divide both sides by the coefficient of x, which in this case is negative 2. When you divide both sides by negative 2, you'll get um, 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. That gives us the answer or the value for x in this particular equation.
and you can al always go back and check that when you replace um, this left hand side with neg um, the value of x with negative 1, we are going to get 8. Let us uh, quickly check that. So we have said that the value of x is negative 1. So when you make the replacement or the substitution, you'll get negative 1 plus 3 minus 4x. Our x is negative 1. This will give us 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by negative 1 is minus 2 plus 2 multiplied by 3 is 6 minus 4 multiplied by 1 multiplied by negative 1 will give us positive 4. When you take negative 2 plus 6, you will get positive 4. When you take, when you add it to 4, you will get 8, which is actually true with what we have on the right hand side. So indeed, the answer or the value of x in this question, equation is supposed to be negative 1. Example 3. Solve each of the following equations. One, five b is equals to four b plus one. Now, if you consider this equation, we have pronumerals on both sides of the equation. We have pronumerals on the left hand side. We also have pronumerals on the right hand side. We can be able to solve this quickly by collecting the like terms. So this will give us, when we want to collect the like terms, that means we must eliminate these pronumerals from the right hand side. And in eliminating it, we need to subtract it from the right hand side. And whenever you subtract from the right hand side, you must also subtract it from the left hand side. So this will give us 5b. We want to eliminate this 4b from the right hand side, therefore we also eliminate it from the left hand side. So minus 4b is equals to, we have 4b on the right hand side plus 1. And because we have said we want to remove it, we again eliminate it that way. So we have subtracted 4b on both sides of the equation. 5b less 4b will uh, will give us b is equals to 4b subtract 4b will give us 0 therefore we remain with 1 and therefore we can be able to say that the value of b in this equation is 1. You can always go back and check whether the value of um, b is actually 1 or not. Part b Eight a is equals to seven a subtract four. The same process will be followed in evaluating or in solving this particular equation. We need to bring like terms on one side, and in this case, you can be able to see that eight a and seven a are like terms. Now, for us to be able to collect them, that means we must subtract 7a from the right hand side. And whatever you do to the right hand side, you must also do it to the left hand side. So if we are going to subtract 7a from the right hand side, we must also subtract it from the left hand side. So this one will give us 8a, we subtract 7a, it will give us 7a, subtract 4, that is what we have on the right hand side. But whatever we have done on the left hand side, we must also do it on the right hand side. When you take 8a subtract 7a, you will get a is equals to. We have said that because we are subtracting it on that particular side, we are going to get a 0. 
this one will leave us with negative 4 on the right hand side and therefore can be able to say that the value of a is negative 4. C, 3y plus 6, is equals to 2 subtract y. Again, this is a pronumeral or is an equation with pronumerals on both sides of the equation. The um, solution for this involves a two-step, that is grouping the like terms or putting the like terms together and then evaluating or solving. Now when the like terms, in this case we have 3y and y, that means we must bring this uh, minus y to this other side and this uh, 6 must be taken to the right hand side for us to have it, uh, for us to have it on the right hand side with 2 which will now be the same. Now when you bring this negative y on the left hand side because it will be crossing the equal sign, it changes the sign to be positive. So we're going to have 3y. When this crosses the equal sign, it becomes plus y is equals to. We have 2 on the right hand side. When 6 crosses the equal sign, it becomes minus 6. So 3y plus y will give us 4y is equals to 2 minus 6 is negative 4. Now for us to be able to get the value of y, we must divide both sides by the coefficient of y, which is 4. When we divide both sides by 4, we'll get that y will be equivalent to negative 1. And therefore, the value of y in this particular case is negative 1. Example 4, again solve each of the following equations. 1, we have 5 into x minus 2 is equals to 2x subtract 13. Now if you look at this equation, we are having pronumerals on both sides of the equation. We have pronumerals on this side because of x. We have pronumerals on the other side because again of 2x. In solving this, we shall have several steps involved. One, we need to expand the brackets of the left hand side, which is going to leave us with, when we expand this, you'll get 5 multiplied by x. This will be 5x. Subtract 5 multiplied by 2 is negative 10 is equals to 2x minus 13. The second step, of course, is grouping the like terms together. And we can be able to see that 5x and 2x are like terms. 10x minus 10 and minus 13 are like terms. Therefore, we can be able to bring them together. Now, when we want to bring these 2x on the left-hand side, we say that whenever it crosses the equal sign, it changes the sign to be um, the opposite of what it already has. So minus 2x, when it, I mean, when 2x crosses the equal sign, it becomes minus 2x. And therefore, we're going to have 5x subtract 2x on the left-hand side is equals to, on the right-hand side, we have negative 13. When this negative 10 crosses the equal sign, it becomes positive 10. 5x minus 2x is 3x is equals to minus 13 plus 10 will leave us with minus 3. And we can be able to get the value of x by dividing both sides by 3. When you divide both sides by 3, you'll get that the value of x will be negative 1. Part B. 3 n minus 2 is equals to 4 n plus 5. Again, this is an equation consisting pronumerals on both sides of the equation. For us to be able to solve this, and also we have brackets on both sides of the equation. 
So for us to be able to solve this, we need to first expand the brackets which are on both sides of the equation. When you expand what you have on the left hand side, you'll get 3 multiplied by n. This will be 3n. Subtract 3 multiplied by 6, you'll get minus 6 is equals to 4 multiplied by n is 4n. 4 multiplied by 5 is 20. The second step here is grouping the like terms together. And you can be able to see that 3n and 4n are like terms since they consist of pronumerals with the same factors. Then negative 6 and 20 are like terms. So for us to be able to solve this, we bring them together. So 4n will come on to the left hand side. And when it crosses this equal sign, it will change the sign to be negative. So we're going to have 3n less 4n is equals to what you already have on the right hand side is 20. And when 6, negative 6 uh, crosses the equal sign, it becomes positive 6. When we solve the left hand side, 3n minus 4n, you'll get negative n which will be equivalent to 26. Now in the case you want to find the answer of, or the value of n, we have to divide both sets by negative one. When we divide both sets by negative one, you'll get that the value of n is negative 26. Example five. Since Tara started started work since Sarah start, uh, Tara started work. Her original hourly wage her original hourly wage has been tripled then decreased by six dollars the salary is now doubled so that she gets eighteen dollars an hour Question is, what was her original hourly wage? This is a mathematical statement that we need to deduce it um, into an expression, then an equation, and then be able to solve it to get um, her original hourly wage. So in this particular case, we have been told that Tara, since when she started working, her original wage, hourly wage, has been tripled. That means it is now three times what she used to get. Then, over some time, it decreased by $6. And currently, it has been doubled. So whatever he was earning, she was earning has been doubled so that she get an hourly wage of 18 dollars per hour we need to calculate what was her original hourly wage and for us to be able to do that we can we can let that original wage to be any of the pronumerals let's say x so let we let um original hourly wage to be x now this x has been tripled, it has decreased, then it has been doubled. So 
that part, uh, particular procedure can be expressed in this way. One, it was triple. That means she earned now three times what she used to earn. So when you triple her hourly wage, you'll get 3x. Then over some time, it was decreased by $6. So we subtract $6. Then whatever she was earning is again doubled. So we double 3x minus 6 when doubled so that she gets a total of $18. So we equate that to 18. So you see we have been able to come up with an algebraic equation which can be able to assist us in solving the value or in solving her original wage. Now this is, a, um, is an equation with pronumerals on one side of the equation. We first need to expand what we have on the left hand side and when we expand this we will get 2 multiplied by 3x which will be 6x subtract 2 multiplied by 6 is negative 12 this must give us 18. Now when we collect the like terms that means we must take 12 to the other side of the equal sign and when we do that we must add it on both sides. So this will give us 6x minus 12 plus 12 is equals to 18 plus 12. Whatever we have done with the left hand side we have also done it on the right hand side. This will leave us with 6x on the left hand side is equals to 18 plus 12 is 30. And therefore for you to be able to get the value of x, we'll divide both sides by 6, which will give us 5. That means that um, Tara used to earn $5. Original wage was $5. Example 5, 6. Using x for the unknown number, write down an equation. And then solve it to find the number. One, we have the product of two and three more then a number is 7. Now this is a mathematical statement. We need to deduce it into an equation, then solve it to get that particular number. We have been told to use x for the unknown. And here you have been told that the product of 2 and 3 more than a number is 7. First, we need to understand that the product of 2 and 3 simply means we multiply 2 and 3. Then more than a number, we can let that number is the unknown number which we have been told to use, x. So when you take x, you multiply you add the product of 2 and 3 the result is 7. When we get the product of 2 and 3, we have said it will be 2 multiplied by 3, which is 6. So we shall have x plus 6 is equals to 7. Now in solving this, we need to eliminate 6. And if you want to eliminate 6, you subtract it on both sides. So we're going to have x to be equal to 7 minus 6. Therefore, x or the value of x is 1. Part B. One less 
than a doubled number is equivalent to 5 more than 3 times more than 3 times of the number again this is a statement we have one less than a double number this double number is the unknown number we do not know it and in this case we have been told to use x so if that number is doubled we're going to get to x then you have been told that one less than double the number that means we subtract one should be equivalent equivalent means equal to five more than three times the number the number as you have said is x so when you get three times of the number that means you multiply x by three which will give you 3x and you have been told it is 5 more than 3 times the number that means we add 5 so you see this is a kind of an equation that has pronumerals on both sides of the equation in solving it it only involves two steps one we group the like terms together then we go ahead and solve so we must bring this 3x on the left hand side when you do that, it will change the sign from being positive to negative. So we shall have 2x, subtract 3x is equals to. What we already have on the right hand side is 5. But when this negative 1 crosses the equal sign, it becomes plus 1. 2x subtract 3x is negative 1 is equals to 5. And uh, this negative 1x is equals to 5 plus 1 is 6. Therefore, we can be able to say that the value of x, we divide both sides by negative 1, which will give us negative 6. Therefore, the value of that number, unknown number, is 6. Final example on pronumerals, um, equations with pronumerals on both sides. Solve the following equation for x in terms of the other pronumerals we have it ax is equals to bx plus d. Now we have been told to solve for x in terms of the other pronumerals. That means we express x in terms of a, b, and d. And before you, you can be able to do that, you must ensure that you have the values of x on one side. That means we must ensure that bx and ax are on the same side. And that means we must bring this bx to the left hand side by subtracting it on both sides. So this one will give us ax subtract bx is equals to d. Now, because we are interested in finding x, and you can be able to see that on the left-hand side, x is common on the two terms. So what we can do, we can be able to factor it out. So when you factor x out, you'll get x goes into ax a times, x goes into bx b times, which will be equivalent to a d. Now, we are interested in getting the value of x. So that means we must ensure that we only have x on one side. And therefore, us to ensure that there is, on, uh, there is x on the left hand side, we must eliminate a minus d by dividing both sides by a minus b. This one will cancel automatically with that, leaving us with x on the left hand side, which will be equal to d all over a minus b and in this case we can be able to say that we have expressed x in terms of the other pronumerals b ax minus bc is equals to xb minus ac 
again the process is the same. We need to ensure that the values of um, the pronumerals with x are on one side. That means for us to eliminate this x beyond the other side, we must subtract it on both sides. So we shall have ax minus xb is equals to what we have on the right hand side is ac. When this crosses the equal sign, it becomes positive bc. Now again, x is common on the left hand side, therefore you can be able to factor it out. x goes into ax a times, x goes into xb, b times is equals to negative a c plus b c. And you can always begin it by writing a positive number. So we can begin with b c, which is a positive pronumeral, subtract a c. This one and this one are the same. Now, if we need to get the value of x, that means we must divide both sides by a minus b. So x into a minus b is equals to bc minus ac. We divide it by a minus b, a minus b. This will cancel out and it will leave us with the value of x being equal to bc minus ac, all this divided by a minus b. Now this brings us to the end of the discussion on equations with brackets and pronumerals on both sides of the equation. We want to move on and look at how we can, be able to, uh, we can be able to solve linear equations. We can be able to use linear equations to solve uh, problems. Now, in nature, we are going to encounter different um, types of problems which can easily be solved by use of linear equations. And there are certain procedures that we can be able to use whenever you want to solve a particular statement into, or into answers. So you'll have a statement one thing you need to understand is read and understand that particular passage or that particular statement. Then define a pronumeral that, is going to, that you're going to use or to apply. Then come up with an equation and solve the equation. As we had said earlier, it is important to always check your answer if it cor uh, correctly suits um, that particular equation that you had originally formed. So there are steps involved in using linear equations in solving uh, mathematical problems. One, we have said you need to read. Read and understand the statement that you are given. Two, define a pronumeral that you are going to use. that you are going to, to use, like you can use x, you can use y, you can use z. That is a kind of a pro, pronumeral. Number three. Number three. Write an equation. Using what you have defined, or you have defined pronumeral using the defined pronumeral. Step number four, solve your equation in step three. You solve the equation in step three. Five, answer the question in words. And as we said, finally, check that the solution makes sense. Check that the solution makes sense. And in checking whether the solution makes sense, you can substitute your answer back into the 
equation that you had formed and check if it's going to give you exactly what you have on the left hand side to be the same with what you have on the right hand side. Example one, five less than a certain number is nine less than three times write an equation and solve it to find the number. Now these are very good question or mathematical statement. We need to deduce this particular statement into a linear equation then use that particular linear equation to solve and get that particular number. Now we said that the first step is reading and understanding that particular statement. We have been told that 5 less than a certain number is 9. Um, then 3 times that particular number, I mean, three is a, 5 less than an, a certain number is 9, less than 3 times that particular number. That means it is the same, same number. We are supposed to write an equation and then solve it to find what that number is. So because you have understood that particular equation, you can move into the second stage, which is defining a pronumeral. In this particular case, we can let that particular number or that unknown number be x. Let the number be x. So in this case, we'll say that you have defined a pronumeral after reading and understanding that particular statement. Then step number two is writing an equation using the pronumeral that you have set. You have been told that five less than a certain number, that means it is x subtract five. Five less than a certain number is, meaning is equal to nine less than three times that particular number. Three times that particular number will be three x, and you have been told it is nine less. So that means you'll have three x. Now this is our step number three, which is an equation. This was step two of defining a pronumeral. We now need to go to step uh, four of solving this particular equation, and in solving it, we have said we need to bring the like terms together. That means we must bring 3x to the left hand side. So this will be 3, I mean x, subtract 3x is equals to what we have on the right hand side is negative 9. When this negative 5 crosses the equal sign, it becomes positive 5. So on the left hand side, when you take 3x from x, you'll get negative 2x is equals to negative 9 plus 5 will leave us with negative 4. When you want to get the answer, you divide both sides by negative 2. And when you divide both sides by negative 2, you'll get that the value or the answer will be negative 4 divided by negative 2, which will be positive 2. This is now our answer that we have been um, desiring. But does it make sense? How do we show that a number that you have found makes sense? Is by substituting back into your equation. Now when we substitute this 2 back into this equation, on the left hand side we are going to have 2 less 5. And on the right hand side we are going to have 3 multiplied by that number 2 less 9. Let's see if it's going to make sense. 2 subtract 5 will get negative 3. Let's see if we do it on the right, uh, right hand side, we're going to get the same. Now 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. 6 minus 9 is negative 3. Indeed, we have checked that our answer or the value of x should be 2. And therefore, we can be able to finally say that the value of the number is 2.
example two, Simon and Mike made 254 runs between them in a cricket match. If Mike made 68 more runs than Simon, how many runs did each of them make? So we have a statement here consisting of Simon and Mike in a race or in a cricket game. And we have been told that both of them make a total of 254 runs between them. And we have been told that Mike is making 68 more runs than Simon. So in that particular case, we need to begin by defining a pronumeral that will stand in for the number of runs for Simon, because already in Mike we have been told it is 68 more than Simon. So if we have Simon on this side and Mike on the other side, we have been told that Mike makes 68 more than Simon. So if Simon makes um, X, for example, we are using X as our pronumeral. Uh, Mike will make X plus 68 more runs. And I've been told that the total number of runs by both Simon and Mike totals up to 254. Therefore, uh, after setting up this pronumeral, we can come up with an equation which, when we solve, will give us the number of runs for Simon and the number of runs for Mike. We have been told that the total runs is 254. That means when you take the runs of Simon, runs of Mike, you add them together, it will give you 254. Therefore, x plus x plus 68, which are the runs of Mike, will give us 254. Now, when you take x plus x, this one is going to give you 2x is equals to 254 subtract 68. Um, I've collected the like term so that I have um, 68 on the other side. So this will leave me with 2x is equals to. When you subtract 68 from 254, you will get a total of 286. And for us to get the number of runs, that is the value of x, we must divide both sides by 2. So when you divide both sides by 2, you'll get that the number of runs, that is uh, the value of x, will be 1. Um, a hundred and... Sorry, this was 1, when you subtract it, you get 186. 186 divided by 2, it will give us a total of 93. So this means that the value of x is 93. And 93 stands in for the number of runs that Simon made. So that means that Simon made 93 runs, while Mark, uh, Mike made 93 runs plus 68, which will give us a total of 161 runs. So we can be able to say that Simon made 93 runs, while Mike made 161 runs.
example three, a rectangle is four times as long as it is wide and its perimeter is 560 centimeters. Find the length and the width of the rectangle. Now here we've been given a statement um, that says that we have a rectangle which has a length which is four times its width and that when you get or you calculate its perimeter it is 560. We are supposed to determine the length or the size of the length and the width of that particular rectangle. So in case this is our rectangle, we need to first set or define a pronumeral that will stand in for the width. Then after getting the, the one for the width, you can be able to get the one for the length because you've been told that the length is four times as long as the width. So you can let, let the width to be a pronumeral x. So if the width is x, that means the length will be four times the width, which will give us four x. Now, we are going to use the expression for the perimeter to be able to solve this particular problem. Perimeter of a rectangle is normally given by two into length plus the width. Now, you have been told that the perimeter of this rectangle is 560 centimeters. So we can make that replacement. 560 is equals to two into the length is four x, the width is x. We need to expand or open up the brackets on the right hand side. This will give us 560 is equals to two multiplied by four x, you will get eight x plus two multiplied by x, it will give us another 2x. That means that 560 will be equivalent to, when you add 8x and 2x, we'll get 10x. That means that 10x is equal to 560. Therefore, we can be able to get the value of x by dividing both x by 10. When you divide this side by 10, you'll get x. When you divide this side by 10, you'll get 56. That means that our width will be 56 centimeters. Therefore, width is equal to 56 centimeters. Length, we were told, is four times the width, meaning it is four multiplied by 56. When we use um, the law of distribution to solve that, it will be four multiplied by 50 plus six. So this one, four multiplied by 50 is um, 200, four multiplied by six is 24. This means the answer will be 200 and 24 centimeters. So the length is 224 centimeters and the width is 56 centimeters. When you use that, you'll get that the perimeter will be 560 centimeters. Want to consider a final example on how linear equations can be used to solve mathematical problems. Two paddocks
in the shapes shown below are to be fenced with wire. If the same total amount of wire is used for each paddock, what are the side length of each paddock. The first paddock is in form of a rectangle where the length is W plus 5 and the width is 5. The other paddock is in form of an equilateral triangle where each of the side is W plus 20. Now we have been told that the same amount of wire was used in paddock A as was in paddock B. That means when you get the perimeter of A and the perimeter of B, they are going to be the same. Now when you get the for us to be able to get the perimeter of the, um, this rectangle, it will be 2 into the length plus width, which will be W plus 5 plus W. We are saying it is the same as the one that was used to face the triangle. And because it is an equilateral triangle, the perimeter will be 3 multiplied by one of the side, which is W plus 20. When you expand these brackets, you'll get 2W plus... This W plus W is 2W, so 2W multiplied by 2 will give us 4W plus 10 is equals to when you expand that you'll get 3w plus 60. When we group the leg terms together that means we bring 3w to the other side we shall have 4w less 3w is equals to 60. When 10 crosses the equal sign it becomes minus uh, minus 10. 4w minus 3w will get 1w which will be equivalent to 50. That means that the value of w is 50. And therefore, we can be able to get the sides of the rectangle and the sides of the uh, triangle. This will be W plus 5. W of side is 50. Therefore, that will be 50 length will be 50 plus 5, which is 55 centimeters or units, because we are not told the units, so it will be 55 units. The width of the same rectangle will be W, which is 50 units. Now the side of the triangle, we have been told it was W plus 20, and our W is 50, so 50 plus 20, it will give us 70 units. So this is 70 units, 70, 70, that's 50, and this is 55 units. Now this brings us to the end of our discussion on how we can be able to use linear equations to solve um, mathematical problems. Um, in our next lesson, we shall be discussing linear inequalities. Um, thank you.